again. Today, just for a change, I'm going to talk about an alternative approach to writing stories. <coughs> um, a lot of people often say that one of the most important characters in the books isn't actually any of the people, it's the landscape around. I think that's probably quite true. I find that landscape is really inspiring and it's extremely important for me because when I'm trying to depict how things might have been back in the 1300s um, it's very difficult for a reader to get a good feel for how things would have looked. So when I started writing, one of the first things I decided was I was going to write about Dartmoor. And the reason was a purely sales technique, because I thought a lot of people who had no idea what medieval England would have been like could get to the moors, they could have a walk around. And the nice thing is on Dartmoor you can park your car up, go for a walk for five minutes in any direction, and all of a sudden you won't hear anything. You can't hear cars, you can't hear aircraft, unless it's a Tuesday, because on a Tuesday the RAF come over for practice. But apart from a Tuesday, you can't hear cars or engines of any sort very, very soon. But there are a number of tools you do need if you're going to be going there. Um, the first thing is a decent camera. Uh, cameras are getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper all the time, but um, this is the new one that I've got to be able to do photography of the landscape so that when I get home I can look on the old computer and have a really good idea about what the weather was like on a certain day, what the light was like, um, and it helps me a huge amount to be able to imagine how things should be uh, depicted for the story. But a camera is very good for some people, me it is certainly, but sometimes if you're trying to get to grips with the landscape a camera isn't quite enough. I tend to find quite often that when I'm out and about I'll take a sketchbook and a paint box. I actually made this one. I'm going to have to show this off because I've spoken about it on blogs and things before but this is my new paint box I've made with two separate tinting areas, four good deep wells and this is constantly with me. Folds up nice and small and I can take that with me wherever I go, and a handful of brushes, and then knock up some little sketches fairly quickly. But the fact is that if you stand, take a quick snap with a camera, you don't really get involved too much with the scenery. You can go back and look at it later, and that's great. But it's much better if you've got any sort of skill with a pen and uh, paper. If you can sit down and just sketch because if you do that you're getting much more involved with the landscape, you're getting a much better feel for exactly how those hills move. You may not write any of that in a book, it doesn't matter, the fact is that you've got more confidence with the descriptions that you put down. Um, one painting I did a while ago, which you probably won't be able to see on the camera, but this is Brent Tor, the church on top of a hill, which you can see from miles and miles away. And Brent Tor has a strange sort of gloomy outlook on the hill and it really does command all of the countryside around there. Now you can take a photo of that but it doesn't really give you quite the same feeling as if when you're there and you concentrate and try to evaluate the impact of that um, old church on top of the hill. So I think that drawing and sketching really does get you more involved with the landscapes and it helps you when you need to go and put them down on paper. Apart from that, when you come to describing your landscape, a mistake that a lot of people do make is they try to give too much detail. I think always try to treat the landscape a little bit like one of the main characters. And by that I mean don't go into too much detail about exactly what decoration there is on a necklace. Don't go into too much detail about exactly how the colours ripple through a green shirt or um, all of that kind of thing. Basically you're trying to give people an overview about what a character looks like, what the countryside looks like, so that they can imagine it themselves in their own mind. It's strange how many people still say that um, the pictures that you get on the radio are a great deal better than the pictures you see on TV. And to an extent that's true, I think, because you're imagining things yourself. You're getting involved in designing the story for yourself. It makes it much, much better for the reader. Um, if you don't give too much detail, you can use a certain amount of your own intelligence to um, imagine how things should be. 
So that, that's a fairly short potted one today. I hope that um, you found it moderately interesting. This is, as you can probably imagine, a fairly busy time because I'm currently most of the way through the next manuscript. I've got this much more to do in the next couple of weeks. So I'm busy, which means videos must therefore be slightly curtailed. But hope you found it interesting. If you did, don't forget to like it, share it, spread it around the, the good news about the Jex Writerly Witterings videos. And I will shortly be back to irritate you with another little video. What joy! Thanks very much for watching and take care. Bye!